The Ottawa Senators are extremely pleased to select from the Boston U Terriers, Brady Kachuk. Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon and I'm your host. Before we get started, please follow us on Twitter at Sense underscore for a lot of days of the games and, of course, breaking news. As well, please check out our sponsor, SeatGeek.com, or download the app from the App Store and use the promo code SENSOCK to save $20 off your first purchase. Now, tonight's games between the Auto Sanders and the New Jersey Devils, but the Sanders were without, were without 41% of their goal scoring tonight as they scratched. I repeat, for precautionary reasons, Ryan Zingle and Matt Duchesne, who we expected to be traded very soon, and Mark Stone. Mark Stone, like we said in the last video, was expected to most likely accept an offer by the Ottawa Senators, and that's not the case. Not the case anymore. Um, Mark Stone um, did not come to an agreement before today's game between, between the Sands and the Devils, and he was scratched as well. Now, this leads me to believe two things. 95% sure that he's going to get traded, and 5% sure that he's going to sign. It's very unlikely he signs. Bob McKenzie didn't throw it out the window yet. Uh, he still hasn't been traded. He hasn't really been put on the trade block yet. Um, but it's look it's trending towards him getting traded, of course, because this is the Ottawa Sanders. Now, I've broken my segment down into a few uh, clutters as the Sanders lost this game 4-0 in the Devils. They didn't start any of their top players. I don't even... I think you guys are more here, or guys and girls are here more for my opinion on the Stone thing. But it, the, when I get to the Sense Talk start of the night, I'll get more into depth because there's not much to talk about for the game because they played awfully. And um, since I'll start the night, I'll have some more in-depth if you're one for that. Skip ahead for that if you didn't want to hear this. Um, firstly, Mark Stone's a great leader. He's a great teammate. And he's a great character. These are all things that the Sanders exemplify and they want in their locker room. Since their locker room was broken last year, they want this. And it shows, to, it shows the bottom line is more important than putting a product on the ice. Um, Eugene Melnick, once again, screws over the fan base. We've lost Carlson, we've lost everybody, and now Carlson was my favorite player. Mark Stone was also my favorite, one of my favorite players. Mark Stone, he just has an infectious, an infectious character and lovability about himself. The way he celebrates all his goals, you know, celebrating like this, and you know, you know, the way he celebrates, and uh, the way he gets his teammates, and it's not only that, it's just the skill set he has as well. He makes his line mates always much better. On the worst team in the NHL, he's a top 10, 15 winger in the NHL. It's, that says something. He's a winger, and he's controlling pace of the game. That says something. You don't trade away Carlson. He's a genera generational talent. And you find Mark Stone in the sixth round. That is something you cherish, and you lock him down for eight years. Lock him down for eight years. And once again, the Sanders incompetence went into full swing, and the Sanders are likely not going to sign Mark Stone, and he'll probably get traded. Uh, and... Um, the Sanders fans deserve better. The Sanders fans deserve better. Because, honestly, you needed an off-ice win, and you didn't get it. Mark Stone was the one player you needed to sign. Not because you're going to be a contender anytime soon. It's because you need a mentor for your t young guys. You need a, a captain. You need a great character. And you need a great teammate and a skilled forward to keep fans that was the last one. You think fans, I can guarantee you this, fans have been screwed over with the, with the, with the Carlson trade. Mark Stone, Duchesne, and Zingle were the last hopes for the Sanders. Fans. Do you really think, Eugene Malnick, or Sanders management, or just Sanders fans in general, or hockey fans in general that are watching this, that Sanders fans are going to drive 45 minutes to, down, to an arena in, in uh, Canada, from downtown Ottawa, and are going to watch... Break a Chuck, who is a rookie and is inconsistent right now. He's going to be really good in the future, but inconsistent right now. And basically just Tom Shabbat. And the rest is just, you know, like, non-all-star forwards or defensemen. I'll tell you something. They're not going to. They're not going to. The fans, the Sanders fans have been screwed over again. And they deserve so much better. And there's no hope. There's not even hope. Because this has happened year in and year out. 18 months ago, the Sanders were... In the Eastern Conference Final, they lost in Game 7, don't remind me, from Kunis' goal against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They had Carlson, they had Turris, they had Hoffman, etc. They're all gone. And this keeps on happening, keeps on happening, keeps on happening. It goes all the way back to Alfredson, when he didn't resign because of, guess what? Mr. Eugene Melnick didn't want to pay him his money. 
that he deserved because he took plenty of team salary pay cuts. Um, this goes way back to then. It goes back to now. Mark Stone, if he resigned, or if he resigns, there's always a chance, but don't get my hopes up, would be the captain 100,000%. 100,000% he would be the captain. And looking right now, it's probably not going to happen. It's not gonna be, he's not probably not going to be captain because he's probably going to be traded. And that's on Eugene Melnick. Eugene Melnick has caused the Sanders organization a mere two years to go from a contender for the Stanley Cup to a contender for, <laughs> for the first overall pick for the next five years, I would assume. The Sanders have good prospects, yeah, but when you have an owner like Eugene Melnick, the bottom line is more important, what bottom line means money, is more important, and you never can sign your top players. So that means like Carlson's gone, Stone's gone, Hoffman's gone, Duchesne's gone, Turris is gone, etc., etc., etc. Why the hell should Sens fans believe this is like, like I said right here, a constant rotation for, of players. Why the hell should Sens fans believe that we're going to be able to resign Shabbat, Bray Kachuk, Drake Batherson, Logan Brown, Philip Gustafson, etc., etc., etc.? What, question what, line, what makes you think? What makes you think? Why should Sens fans believe that we can resign those guys and <clears throat> when we've never been able to assign are star players that we've developed long term. We're basically a feeder team to the rest of the NHL. And this is literally an example of the Oakland Athletics of the MLB. One difference though. There's one difference. Sanders and Oakland Athletics are both starved for money. That's the similarities they have. Here's the difference they have. The Oakland Athletics use their money smartly and use it their that money that the sparse money they have into analytics and advanced stats to find players that can help their team for cheap. While the other Sanders don't even have money for that, they have no money for nothing. They, they have the thinnest management group in the league, so they don't have anything. They have no players. They have no foundation. At least the Athletics have something. If you're going to run an NHL team, you need to have money for one of the two things. You either need to have money for a solid management group, or you need to have money for players. Or both, like the Maple Leafs obviously have both. The Senators have neither, and that's very hard, because the Senators scouting group is one of the best in the NHL. They found Alfie, they found Hoffman, they found Stone, they found Zingle, they found etc., 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 late in the rounds. And guess what happened to all of them? Bye-bye. They're all gone. It's a constant rotation of players if you're a Sens fan, and in the pregame show, kudos to Ian Mendez and CJ Stevenson, who is a friend of the show who's been on the show before, uh, for a great pregame show on TSN 1200 between this game between the Devils and the Senators. They really went at it and blamed Melnick like they should, for the catastrophe that's been the Ottawa Senators the last two years or year year and a half. And they had Dean Brown on the show and he was absolutely ridiculous. He said some very stupid things. One of the things he said that caught my attention, that didn't catch too many people's attention but caught mine, is you, you shouldn't get attached to hockey players. But that's, in my opinion, the whole point of watching hockey. It's the whole point of watching hockey. Because you're, you're cheering for your hometown team, you're cheering for your team you cheer for, and it's kind of like we're watching a movie or a TV show where you, you get attached to a character and when they die off, you get sad and you, you kind of lose interest in the show, right? Or the movie, right? When this happens in hockey, you know, it's a bummer, but you, you look forward to the future. But when you're an Ottawa Sanders fan and this happens constantly, 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 and it just looks like there's no hope in the future, then what is the whole, what's the whole point? You're going to trade. Here's what, here's what Sens fans, including myself, think. About prospects like Batherson, Formenton, etc. They're going to come up. They're going to play five, six great years in Ottawa. We're going to be so good. We're going to make the playoffs two, three years. And then they're going to ask for money. Because, you know, they've been playing amazing. And they're going to be shipped out and traded for prospects. It's a consistent loop with Eugene Melnick at the helm. That will never change until Eugene Melnick is gone. That will never change. And this is a prime example with Mark Stone. This is the one guy that you... With Carlson, they made up BS, you know... Uh, injury, or, oh, locker room problems. There's no, there's literally no reason, or there's no excuse to trademark Stone. There's no excuse. No excuse. He's 26, a great leader, a great player, and a great mentor th to the young guys. There's no excuse. And hopefully, Sens fans that have not been able to see it can finally see it now, that there is a huge problem, and things will not get better until the ownership group is changed. And, you know, I'm not going to go any further into this. 
I've been talking for 10 minutes about this. And, you know, he's still an Ottawa Senator right now, but it looks like that those days are numbered. I mean numbered, like a day or two. I think he'll be traded in the next day or two, in my opinion. Uh, he's either signed tonight or tomorrow, or he's gone. That's my opinion with Mark Stone. Um, but I'll probably... Uh, I'm... I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. But we'll go more depth to it. There's a Sens game tomorrow against the Blue Jackets at 7 o'clock. Uh, I'll talk about that in my, my, my video recap for that game um, as well. I'll talk. Uh, hopefully, I'll have some good news, not bad news, uh, over Mark Stone. Um, but besides that, uh, I'll, we'll go more in depth to it when we get more information. But right now, that's all i got to say about that. Uh, Sanders loses 1-4-0. Anderson Nilsson, 871 save percentage. Corey Schneider gets his first shot in two years. Uh, shots and goal, 31-30 in favor of the, the Devils. Um, Devils just played a good game. Sanders did not, and the Devils took advantage of the Sanders depleted lineup. Uh, let's get the Sen Sox during the night voted by you, the fans. This is where I'm going to analyze the game. So, fourth place is number seven vote. Rudolph Balsers got the fourth place of the Sen Sox star of the night. You know, he had a great game, you know, he had a couple of nice chances, especially on the power play, good game for him, going into this game, he had two goal games with a, with a goal in a row, then he got one tonight, obviously they got shut out, but a good game for him. Third star, 50% of the vote, break a chuck all over the ice like usual, and you know, even with Mark Stone, it's, it's um, optim there's some optimism, optimism there as he's still able to get some scoring chances, and you know, when he fills into his body and gets more matured, he's going to be a hell of a player. Uh, second star of the night, 21% of the vote, Thomas Shabbat. The only guy in the D zone that looked good, uh, created some offensive chances. Second star of the night, not much to talk about him, but the first star, Philip Schlappick, there's a lot to talk about him. He just got called up, as Duchesne, of, co of course, got set, so Schlappick, and he took advantage. He could have scored two, three times, hit the post once, but all over the ice. He is a name I constant, consistently heard tonight. Great showing by him, 52% of the vote for the Sunstock star of the night. And uh, kudos to Philip Schlappick. That's the only optimistic thing about tonight's game. Um, besides that, the next Sens game is tomorrow against the Columbus Blue Jackets. I'll see them when the Sens take on the Blue Jackets at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And please let Mark Stone be signed by my next video. Besides that, thank you for watching. Please follow us on Twitter at SensTalk underscore. If you like to the games and, of course, breaking news, please like us on Facebook at SensTalk. Add us to your circles on Google Plus SensTalk. Click the big red button down there and subscribe to us. Like this video. Share this video. circle stuff. Please, please, please check our website, sensocksensor.com, for a lot of time updates of the games and, of course, breaking news. And so please uh, check out our, our website, sensocksensor.com. We update that every single day. And, of course, please check out our sponsor, SeatGeek.com, or download the app, app Store and use the promo code SENSOCK to save $20 off your first purchase. Besides that, the Sands fall to the New Jersey Devils 4 0 as Duchesne, DeSingle, and Mark Stone sat. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Lots to talk about the next few days. The biggest moment in Sanders franchise history. Will the Sanders sign these guys or will they trade them? Huge week coming up. Let's see what happens. I'll see you in the next one. Go Suns go.